Hi guys, Kirk and Jay here with Kirk Giordano Plastering. As you may know by now, with over 500 videos, we do instructional videos on how to. Today what we're going to do is we are going to prep this chimney and do, we're going to apply a product called Structolite. Structolite is a lightweight plaster that has perlite in it instead of sand. We're going to double coat it to get rid of all these lines. We're actually going to go a little more in depth, but that's for another time. What we have to do first, guys, is we have to, what I was telling Jay is, I must score the shit out of this brick with this um, wire brush, meaning I'm putting my leg here and I'm scoring it. And Jay pointed out that you're doing micro abrasions, meaning after I give it the micro abrasions where I really literally score it because it's paint and I want my uh, I want my applications to adhere that's first after I clean it well then we can use some denatured alcohol or you could use a lot of other products and we're going to clean that and what that does is it, it gets all the residue off because no plaster no interior or exterior will stick to a surface that is got dust, grime, dirt, moss, or any of that. Then what we're going to do is, I'm using, and a lot of folks tell me, Kirk, what's the difference between the Larson's plaster weld or the Larson's uh, weld crete? Plaster weld is for insides, guys, period. It's for inside. It's a liquid lath. It bonds plasters to whatever surfaces. So after we score this and prep it, I'm going to apply this pink stuff. And you see how pink that is right there. So the next time you see us, we'll be, we're going to do this. It's going to take us about an hour and a half, two hours, Jason and I, to do what I just referred to. Then we're going to come back and I'll show you how we apply Structolite, Structolite plaster to this chimney here. Okay, guys, so you don't, we don't switch to the next scene and you say, gee whiz, how those corners magically appear. We are putting these corners on because we want to reinforce these. And what I generally do is I'll use a magnet with a quarter inch nail, pop these guys in on the grout or in the grout. If we try to go in the brick, what happens? We explode the brick. Uh, so that being said, these are all going to have a uh, just like this. What we'll do is we'll put a corner, remove this soapy water. And by the way, guys, I take soapy water after I've cleaned it and we remove all the residue of the uh, denatured alcohol. Last thing I'll show you before we start, I'll take a regular corner aid, this right here. I cut this much off of it. Why did I cut so much off of two at one time? Because these guys are going to go right here. And then I take my uh, quarter inch nails and I go in the grout. If you go in the brick, all you do is shatter the brick. The next time you see this, we'll actually be doing the Structolite finish. All right, guys, we are at the stage where we're going to show you how to spread Structolite. And you might have asked the question, you've done 500 videos already, if not more, how come you haven't showed how to use Structolite? Structolite, um, it's a pretty good product. In fact, we used to use it a lot when I was union. Uh, it comes in 50 pound bags. Back when I was applying this stuff, when I was a union uh, plaster, they had 80 pound bags. <laughs> That's back in the early 80s. And can you do back to back coats? Yes, I'm about to do back to back coats. The reason I haven't used this in so long is because generally what I'll do is I'll do a scratch coat and a brown coat and finish same day. This particular stuff, you can do back-to-back -back base coat, say like a scratch coat and a brown coat, and then you rod it or darby it with this right here and leave it rough for the, the next coat. And it used to be this stuff you needed uh, about four hours minimum before it would set. What we would do when I worked Union is we'd put it on and we'd do mainly hospitals, schools, meeting rooms, uh, a lot of commercial projects with it uh, because it has a fi high fire ratio. Um, but for the sake of what we're doing now, uh, 
it's perfect for this. What, what I'm going to do is I'm going to scratch this. I'm going to turn around and brown it. And one thing we did here is I put a little bit of gypsum in this. Uh, the gyp is what luminite is to Portland stucco. Now what is that? That means it's going to accelerate because I don't want to uh, put, I don't want to come back here twice. What I'm going to do is I'm going to scratch this. I'm going to turn right around and brown it. Then I'm going to rod it and I'm going to let that set. And by the time we take lunch, it'll be set so where I can come back and now do my diamond finish on that, which is going to be a color diamond finish. I'm hustling now because it's been a long time since I used this material. And when I used it way back in the early 80s, didn't even know about uh, accelerators. So uh, we do have a little bit of gyp in here. And there's a whole bunch of products you can add to it to accelerate it. And again, this stuff is, it's got perlite in it which means it's half the weight of regular uh, stucco or, and regular plaster. It's, a, it's pretty lightweight because of the perlite, uh, which makes it ideal. In fact, Jason Nixon said, damn, Dad, I should have been using this stuff years ago. And after spreading it just for a few seconds, like, like I am right now, I'm thinking the same thing. Anyhow, we are out of mud. Jay's going to go mix me another bucket because all I have are crumbs in here so when he brings back that other bucket I'll put my second coat on and show you how we rod that and that'll have to wait and then when I finish everything I'll show you the results all right guys before I finish up I want to show you this is what we're using Structolite kind of beat up but uh, Structolite unless you have some practice with it it is really tough to get uh, especially with accelerators to get it right, including us, because I wasn't sure exactly how much accelerators to put. And so we put a few extra scoops and it set so fast, we just had to throw a bucket away. So um, if I were you guys, I just, I discard the acceler accelerators if I'm having a hard time with them. And I do this stuff for a living. But anyway, getting back to the structural light. It's perfect for this uh, because again, it does have a higher ratio. And when it starts to set, it's just like all the rest of the muds that I show. When it starts to set, you use a little bit of elbow grease and just get it as smooth as possible. Earlier when, uh, well, when, a second ago when I was explaining it, it started to set and I had to use a lot of muscle and then I thought, heck with this, we just threw it away. So it does take a bit of practice to use this. This consistency here is about right. It's a crapshoot, guys. Ron Roberts, a good friend of mine, uh, who's one of the best in the business with this, he told me earlier, he said, well, Kirk, you know, it's going to be a crapshoot if you put a handful or a couple scoopfuls, you never know what you get when it's pre-mixed like this. And it is. But anyhow, getting back to what I'm doing is, I'm going to go ahead and finish all this up. And when I'm finished with everything, I'll show you the results, guys. Okay, guys. Lastly, what I generally do is, right now is, I want to leave this particular finish rough. A lot of folks who say, Kirk, how come you never use Structolite? Is because again, I do same day systems where I do scratch and brown or, and finish. Now this particular material is you leave it rough so it can accept the third coat. If you want to do all three coats in a day, that requires a skill that very few people possess. I'm doing it this way but I don't recommend anybody do three coats with this because again, you try to trial this. This is my second coat here. Now, if you try to trial it 
uh, without the accelerators, it just sticks like glue on the trowel, so it doesn't work. Anyway, guys, that's the answer to you folks who say, how come I never use the structural light because I do same-day systems? We are going to allow this to set, and I'm going to finish this up here. When we're done with everything, we'll show it to you. All right, guys, we are complete with this structural light finish. Notice when the base coat is dry, it turns much darker than when you first originally put it on. So now I can do a finish coat today or I can do it tomorrow. As much trouble as I went through to put the accelerators in this, I probably will do it today. But anyway, I wanted to show and point out some of the, some of the things about structural light. Again, if you want to learn a whole lot about structural light, Google Structural Light, and then it'll tell you everything you need to know about that particular product. You can put it over cement, you, you can put it over brick, block, rock, almost everything, including sheetrock too. It's a gypsum-based gypsum product. Anyway, my name is Kirk, Jason on the camera. As usual, we thank you for watching, and we'll see you guys on the next one.